At T-Mobile for Business, unconventional thinking means we see things differently so you can focus on what matters most. That's why we've become the leader in 5G, number one in customer satisfaction, and a partner who includes 5G in every plan. So you get it all. Unconventional thinking is better for business. Open Signal Awards T-Mobile as America's fastest 5G network USA. 5G user experience report July 2021. Capable device required. Coverage not available in some areas. Some uses may require certain plan or features. See T-Mobile.com. For JD Power 2020 award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of the Secret to Success podcast. Today, I bring to you an amazing guest. I bring to you Mr. Riggs Eckleberry. How are you doing today, Mr. Riggs? Deanna, I am so happy to be on this show because I think you guys are right there in terms of what people need to hear in this crazy year of 2020. (laughs) Yes, it has definitely been a crazy year. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Mr. <laughs> so, Mr. Reed, you're you are absolutely fascinating. So, can you please let our audience know who you are and what it is you do exactly? Well, thank you. I have a uh, a very checkered career. I'm one of those, um, you know, really old overnight successes. <laughs> so, uh, I I've been through it, and um, you know, I've had my had a business failure in the 80s, you know, and learned so much from that and and uh, went through the dot-com as I fell in love with tech and really, uh, for me, the dot-com was an amazing time. Helped a bunch of companies achieve success. And then I was crazy enough to want to become a CEO. And <laughs> this happened in 2006, 2007, and um, I launched the company that I have at that time. And Diana, it's been an amazing uh, adventure, and it continues even now. In fact, even more because of because of the amazing times we're in. Wow! So, if you could let us know what it is that your your current business is and exactly what you do, which I find absolutely fascinating. <laughs> well, thank you. You know, uh, water. Well, first of all, the name of the company is Origin Clear. It is a public company. We've been uh, in existence since 2007, public since 2008, so that's, um, you know, a a long time, 12 years to be public. And you might say that we have definitely survived that process. But what is interesting, (laughs) thank you, thank you so much. Um, I I bear the scars, I definitely do. But um, the thing is, is that the company moved into, from an early start, in a completely different space, which was this amazing thing called algae. We wanted to make algae into biofuels, but as everybody noticed, uh, after 2008, the oil industry crashed, and you really couldn't make biofuels for you know $25 a barrel. So with that, uh, we found a new life in the water industry. And that's when the fun started because the water industry is a gigantic. By this year, it's a trillion-dollar industry worldwide, and yet it's only doing a fraction of its job. 2.6 billion people worldwide do not have access to clean water. Um, there, there's all kinds of issues, um, and you know, what, it's very hard to change. You know, so. It's one of those um, situations where an old, old industry is very set in its ways. And I came along with this big, you know, disruption tech guy kind of outlook, you know, make mistakes, make them fast, and change things. <laughs> the water industry is like, huh, what? So that has been the challenge. And we have done all kinds of things along the way to, to build our capabilities but really, the arrival of the COVID is what propelled us to make huge, huge leaps forward because, and I like to say that I'm grateful to the virus for this, is that everything that was chronic became acute in 2020. Every, you know, Neiman Marcus was going to go bankrupt, but it did it in 2020, right? So everything that was happening slowly snowballed, you know. Uh, flight from the cities. Mm-hmm. People were leaving the cities already. Well, now there's lines around the block at U-Haul in Chelsea, New York. So we 
had a similar process where uh, January 29th, we realized what was going on. And we've been transforming our company ever since. Very, very interesting and uh, fascinating process. Probably the hardest uh, seven, eight months I've had in my life. Wow. Well, first, again, I want to congratulate you. You said you guys have been disruptive, but the greatest companies are disruptive. So congratulations. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. And... With what you're doing, you are literally, especially like you said, with with the current pandemic that's going on, you you and your company are literally saving the world and helping people. So what was, what initiated, not just with, with COVID, but what else initiated this particular process, the um the water treatment systems that you you and your company have been been working on since you started Origin Clear. What initiated that? Right. Well, thank you, because it's been kind of like the rings of a tree. You know, uh, as you get older, you get more rings. And, and the first ring was really the technology that my brother, co-founder Nicholas Eckleberry, uh, created initially for the algae industry to uh, harvest the microscopic algae um, and that we then – redeployed to harvest the microscopic uh, sewage particles, the the stuff that's in the sewage that, you know, you got to somehow uh, make it clump up. And it's, that's a very scientific term, clump up. <laughs> but um, you have to somehow clarify the water, get the, get the, the, the messes out. And we created a, a process that is electrical stimulation that causes these things to attract to each other, kind of like a magnetism kind of concept. And it worked very, very well. And um, that was our initial technology. We found, however, that the water industry was not uh, very very open to new technologies. It takes them 12 to 15 years to adopt one. And I was in a hurry, right? Well, you know, I was, I was accustomed to coming to a company and five months later selling it to a, to a bigger fish in the dot com, and here I am looking at 15 years. I don't think so. That's kind of like, you know, going to jail. So <laughs> instead, we started looking at other ideas. For example, we started. We bought a company that is today our our fantastic Texas-based company, McKinney, Texas, called Progressive Water Treatment, and they uh, they are extraordinarily proficient in building everything from. You know, a fifty thousand um, dollar, you know, trailerable um, water purification system for pools, for example, uh, all the way to a two million dollar um, water purification system for a, an electrical utility. You know, like uh, like for example, Excel Energy, people like that. So, you know, and everything in between. So they're very versatile, but everything's a custom job, which as you you know, when you do things custom, there's only so much you can grow, but it gave us this, this basic ability to build stuff. And then we brought in, uh, in 2018, we brought in a, an amazing technology for delivering prefabricated water systems, water systems in a box, we call them, and using a very, very tough outer lining. And uh, the, the, the gentleman who, who has five patents in the area brought those patents and joined us as chief engineer and he became uh, integrated with the Texas operation. And now they have this, um, you know, they're, they're, they're really building ahead of steam and they are an amazing team. Um, you know, we were all wondering what was going to happen during the COVID and um, despite literally everything closing down for a month in the, in the height of the COVID, um, we still achieved a 22% increase for the first half of this year versus the first half of 2019. And um, that is astonishing and they continue to ramp up. So that business is doing fine. And we thought we were really doing something transformative with these modular prefabricated water systems. But we still found that water, water the expansion of our business was slow. And we were in 2019 dealing with it, dealing with it, dealing with it, you know, dealing with it, uh, like kind of like a migraine headache. 
then as I said, January 29th, we realized, uh uh-oh, everything is going to change because when you shut down an entire province in China, there's going to be a domino effect. Little did we know they were going to shut down the whole world. I mean, that it was beyond our wildest dreams, but we knew that something significant was happening as all prices crashed right there in the first few days of of February. Um, We really knew something was happening. And um, uh, Diana, I I run a a weekly CEO briefing where I discuss the trends and what's going on in our company and outside. And on the briefing of the 6th of February, I look back in the transcript. Sure enough, I'm talking about the oil prices crashing because of an epidemic in Wuhan. Well, we knew at that point that it was time to really solve the real problem in the water industry. And we realized something, which I think a lot of your listeners will agree. It's the money, stupid. It is the money. In other words, if you have the funding for a water project, the water project will get done, right? Right, Uh, exactly. Without the money, then it's a long, long process of finding the financing, the capital, the whole capital expense thing. So if we could somehow solve the funding side, then we would not just, we would not be selling systems. We would be selecting them. You know, we, oh, we select you. <laughs> you're going to, you're going to have a system and here's, here's the money, right? So that we realized was the, the future of, of water really was to, to accelerate the funding. And we realized something very interesting is that, you know, people can invest in real estate. They can invest in oil and gas. They can invest in solar. They can't really invest in water equipment. They can buy shares in a, in an ETF or whatever. Sure. But I'm talking about being able to invest as people do in an oil and gas, uh, um, a well, for example, they'll invest in a single well or they'll invest in, um, you know, a, a portfolio of real estate uh, properties. Well, you can't do that in water. Uh, and we, and, and it's strange, but it's really because until very recently, water systems were huge. And so how are you going to do that? It's all state government, you know, municipal, et cetera. But right. in recent times, like everything else, it's all been going down to the small. Why? Yes, because, of course... Infrastructure is falling apart. I like to say that in California, we're not going to get the high-speed train. We're going to get the Google self-driving car, right? Why? Because we already have the freeways, right? So um, why build a, a track when you've got freeways and then it's relatively inexpensive to convert the cars to self-driving? And that's what's happening everywhere. It's happening with, of course, phones, with energy, transportation, And invisibly, water. I say invisibly because, you know, you go home and you flush your toilet, the water goes away. You don't have a problem, you think. But what you don't realize is that consumers are being treated decently by by the utilities, but not businesses. Businesses are more and more being told, you need to treat your own water. And so that is a problem, but it's also an opportunity, right? As things get smaller, then you can get in, you can get investors involved, and that led us to the development of a concept called a, a, a new water marketplace. Look Jobs is a new way to hire or get hired for a job, and is changing the way jobs get filled by using a fully social media based experience. Check out LookJobsApp.com today for more info. If you are a business owner and are tired of creating job descriptions that no one reads and over getting unqualified candidates for your jobs, try Look Jobs. Download the app now, the Apple Store and Google Play, and create your business profile for free. As an introductory offer through the end of August, create new job posts for just $1 each. Once you have a job posted, you can connect with job seekers and start interviewing immediately. If you are looking for a job and tired of creating resumes no one reads, just download the app and create your pre-profile. Start looking for jobs and connect with those employers immediately to schedule your interview. Download the Look Jobs app today and start looking. And then something very interesting happened. We got into water as a career. 
we started looking at career building of water systems. Um, and it almost happened by accident. We did a deal where, where we put uh, an entrepreneur who had lost his job this year and was looking for a business to start. And, you know, this Yelp says this 80,000 businesses have closed forever this year, of which 60,000 were small businesses. So there's a ton of entrepreneurs out there who are looking for opportunities. And there's lots of opportunities in water. And so we did this. This gentleman, Ryan Kustra, um, got a machine, a trailer machine that, that cleans out pools. And he's had a marvelous, marvelous success. So what he, uh, in fact, he wants to get a second unit. And we financed that. So this program is called Pool Preserver. He, and your listeners can go to poolpreserver.com. And they can see how we not only built the machine, but we helped build the business, all of the, um, the how the financials would work, how to market it. And we're actually building a pool preserver academy. And initially, we're not going to bring outside investors to, to fund the pool preserver. We are funding it ourselves because think about it. The most profitable part of General Motors is not the cars. It's the financing. Mm -hmm. And so if you can finance these machines internally, then you build huge revenues, profits, assets, et cetera. And the way it's done, obviously, is people invest in the public company, Origin Clear. And it, because we're public, we have this ability to offer, um, you know, there's, a, there's one offering for the accredited or high-end investors. There's another one for the everybody kind of investor. And people, you know, get very high returns on their money, but we get even more because we're building people's careers and we're creating all these opportunities. And I'll tell you, Ryan Kustra, with that, that machine of his, his pool preserver, he's delighted to pay his monthly fee, even if it's higher than normal, because he's making six times as much in, in monthly um, uh, revenues from this machine. So it's a win-win. He makes money, we make money, and our investors do really well. So, you know, it, right, we're so excited about this program, Diana, with this Water as a Career, that um, we're going to keep ramping it up as fast as we can. Wow. I'm just <laughs> – I'm super excited because – we don't think we don't we don't think about this aspect of life like we don't think about what we're actually drinking what is actually going on in the city or even just being profitable from water we all think you know bottled water is the way to go but we don't think about the entire system of it or trying to what's the word i'm looking for I just lost the word. We we don't we don't think about. We think it's already done. But I have a question for you because there's an article that I saw um, about that that you did. And so my question is, when it comes to you, your company, the amazing innovation that you have, for our audience to understand, how safe is our water? Like. Why why should we look into origin like origin clear? Why should we do that? Like exactly how safe is our water? Because from what I read, what I saw, we don't know what we we don't know anything when it comes to the safety or the cleanliness of our water. So can you please let our, educate our audience on that? Well. First of all, you need to know that Flint, Michigan only scratches the surface of the water quality in this country. There is, for example, South Bend, Indiana, uh, had a lot of industries, and those industries are gone, but the aquifers are toxic. And it's some, I had one, one person tell me, I don't know if it's true, but seven times worse water than Flint, and nobody's talking about it, right? So wow. there is a way for you to find out because the Environmental Working Group, ewg.org, if you go there, you will get 
You just put in your zip code and it will tell you the, what your water is all about. Very simple. So um, that's one way to know. Now, having said that, you know, American city water is designed to not kill you right away. In other words, it does not have, you know, horrible infectious diseases and various things that are in water, such as in India, right? So it, 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 it is disinfected and it is relatively clean, uh, relatively pure, but tragic events occur that we don't recover from ease from Italy, such as what happened in Flint. And it's really because of people trying to save money on infrastructure. So, for example, in Flint, billions of dollars of damages were done by the city manager saving $500 a day on anti-corrosion chemicals. Very simple. Um, look at the city of Compton, California, is dealing with brown water. And when they asked the water utility, well, how come this is so? The water utility said, well, you you." You've been turning down our requests for infrastructure repairs for years, decades, and you reap what you sow. In other words, if the water industry doesn't get allocations, it can't work, you know, the infrastructure falls apart. What, what this means in the, in the net right now is that we have to fall back on our own resources. We ha- it's got to become the people's water, right? Um, mm. You know, you need to, you need to um, drink filtered water in your home. I mean, even if you only use a, a Brita pitcher, you should only drink filtered water. But if we look at business in general, for example, we just sold um, a, a, wa- a purifying uh, system for the water going into an entire major hotel. This hotel will now have the kind of water they would normally put you know, on the bureau when you come into the hotel room and you get to pay $2 for it, that mm-hmm. water will now run through all of the showers, the sinks, the kitchens. Everything will be the same incredible grade of water. They just bit the bullet and they decided they're, they're a high-end hotel, um, which I can't name just yet, but, you know, <laughs> as the, but it's just one of those things. But as time goes by, we yeah. will be able to publicize it. Um, and that is that um, they saw it as a business advantage to be able to say, hey, you know, when you, uh, ladies, when you shower in our hotel shower, your hair won't get all bleached out from the chlorine or whatever. You know, so you, this, there's all kinds of benefits from having ultra pure water. And so that was our contract. And, and we intend for that to be another waters or career System. In other words, we will train people to go sell those to businesses, be it, be it hotels or apartment buildings or whatever, because that is a huge and growing business. Um, and so all of these activities, we are, through the Water as a Career program, we are uh, uh, really planning to deploy many water companies in the, in, this, in the form of these entrepreneurs who we, you know, um, enable to have these um, fantastically well-designed systems and the know-how to go with it to build a business. Now, obviously, the devil's in the details. We have to raise, you know, we, we raise money, and so the capital is flowing. At T-Mobile for Business, unconventional thinking means we see things differently so you can focus on what matters most. That's why we've become the leader in 5G, number one in customer satisfaction, and a partner who includes 5G in every plan. So you get it all. Unconventional thinking is better for business. Open Signal Awards T-Mobile as America's fastest 5G network USA. 5G user experience report July 2021. Capable device required. Coverage not available in some areas. Some uses may require certain plan or features. See T-Mobile.com. For J.D. Power 2020 award information, visit JDPower.com slash awards. Stand out from all the rest by becoming a CFA charter holder. As the investment industry evolves, professionals need the tools to evolve with it. When you become a CFA charter holder, you're not only developing real world skills and expertise, you're demonstrating to employers that you have what it takes to thrive. In fact, more than 80% of those who earn the CFA charter say it boosted their career. Sound interesting? Go to cfainstitute.org slash learn to find out more about the level one CFA exam. We can't take care of everybody right away. 
So, you know, we're working with people who have the good credit, but over time we plan to bring in really anybody who's, who's deserving. I don't think that necessarily a good credit rating is, makes you a good person. I think that um, people should have an opportunity to prove themselves. And you know what? If it doesn't work out, we just take the machine back. It's not a big deal. In other words, it's, it's more like a rental program where it's not the end of the world. Um, it, and it, I mean, this is, I'm being fair to finance companies. They have to operate with credit guarantees and so forth because they have no control over the equipment once it goes away. But we plan to keep control to support the entrepreneur and and if for some reason it doesn't work out, they don't laugh after all, whatever, it's like no harm, no foul. We'll take back the machine. All right. So could you or like a how 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 can how can those within their city urge their city to say, Hey, this is what we need. Can you can you reach out to Origin Clear? Can you, you know, find out what like what do we need to do as a city to get our cities to to reach out to you and say, hey, you know, our constituents are driving us crazy. What do you do? How can we get what you do here in our city? Like, what can we do as as the population to get to? to get our, our cities, our, you know, city governments to say, okay, look, we do need this in our city. Let's reach out to them and see what we can do. Yeah. Um, we, we've learned that, that dealing with cities is, is a painful experience. Um, unless you're willing to donate equipment, like, you know, for example, Jaden Smith has done a wonderful job in, in Flint, Michigan, but it's 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 a it's a charitable activity. He's not making money from it. Um, so, working with cities for us is not a business model. Um, but what we're doing is we're doing a an action on it. Going over time, we're going to build a series of programs that will enable people to deploy business solutions that water problems. And so. Here's the best thing that, that, that uh, your listeners can do. Number one, I invite them to join my weekly briefing uh, every Thursday afternoon at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Uh, just go to originclear.com, click on CEO, and sign up, and you will get a nice, exciting half hour of the latest and greatest, and you'll have a chance to, to ask questions and so forth. That's all you know, really, really worthwhile, number one. Number two, um, you know, get onto our newsletter and um, by going to originclear.com, you'll get my updates and there's opportunities to invest as little as $500, which is fine. And that's always helpful. And it's, it's a win-win because you've got the double digit yields, um, you know, more 10% or more per year, plus a big bonus at the end. So it's, it's a, it's a very good uh, program. And then there's also the opportunity to become an, an entrepreneur, and that's the, the easiest way to do it right now is to go to poolpreserver.com and take a look at that program. Um, not everyone may want to get into the pool cleaning business, but at least it gives, gives an idea of how this thing works, and we'll be ramping it up. So this is, Deanna, this is the very beginning of this program, but I tell you, people are excited um, the first, this first pilot program has worked out beautifully. We're, we're, we're happy as can be about it. And, you know, with the help of investors and, and the general public, we're going to ramp it up. And, uh, I mean, so far 800,000 people have, have watched the pool preserver video online. It is, it is a very, very, um, exciting prospect. So we, we invite the, um, and of course go to our Facebook page, Origin Clear and, you know, like that, and just become a fan. You know, we, we love it when people are fans of the company, um, when they get involved in any way possible. We're super excited. And all I want to say is your listeners should not be super paranoid about water. They, they, like I say, the American water will not kill you. Um, over time, drink better water, 
and you'll be better off over time. Uh, but in the meantime, let's make some change happen. And that's what we're about. Yes. Thank you so much. I've I've learned more <laughs> in the last 30 minutes from listening to you than I have ever. I was, because as I was going through everything, I'm like, okay, this is going to be interesting. Because I have, first off, I have not interviewed anyone in the tech industry, period. Like, Antonio is, he is, like, he is tech. But for me to interview someone else within the tech industry, I have not been able to do that. So that was my first interest. I'm like, oh, this is going to be neat. And then with the industry that you're in, I was like, okay, this is definitely something that our audience needs to hear, you know. And then, and, and one of the things that you also pointed out was, you know, you're used to going into a company and, like, five or six months selling, but this one took you, like, 12 to 15 years. How was that process especially with, you know, your team being as innovative and, and disruptive as it has been, but being able to move things because of who you are. But then when it comes to getting through the red tape or when it comes to, you know, like you said, in this industry, people make changes very slowly. How has that been for you for our entrepreneurs out there who are in that phase, like they're like, okay, normally they're used to things moving quickly, making the changes and being disruptive, and now they're kind of as they, they have to slow down. How How is that for you, and how did you and your brother and your company move past that portion without without becoming, not distraught, but without becoming, you know, kind of, okay, this is not working how we want it to? Right. Well, here's one thing that yeah, I told you that in the 80s I had business failure. And the interesting part about that is that the, I, the business itself didn't fail. I gave it to my best salesman and he became a, a millionaire with it. It's that I gave up, right? Uh, I thought, wow. you know, I said, oh my gosh, I cannot take it any further. And I didn't realize the, the upside, uh, the future of the business it was really a business of of putting companies for the time into a a um, commercial computing system that you know they put their um, their accounting in their their general ledger and and, and all their uh, inventory management and so forth onto a computer for the first time from paper this was the 80s when it was just starting to happen and um the the process of doing that with companies is a painful process what I did realize is that most of those companies would still be with us 20 or 30 years later as my successor, Juan, told me when he came and saw me uh, in the 90s when I was in the dot-com and he came to see me in L.A. and he said, Riggs, I still have customers that you and I got, you know, over 10 years ago. And I realized that I really had not understood the lifetime value of a customer and and therefore, I got discouraged. So the number one thing, first and foremost, is failure is always self-created. It is never external. You can always find a way to succeed. But you may not have the information you need to succeed. You may not fully understand what the situation is, and so discovery is key. Um, the other thing to remember is that all businesses are really just people, right? So with Origin Clear, you know, the, the team that I have today is not the, the, the team that I started out with. In fact, even my brother moved on. He's doing his own thing and, you know, d doing a fine job of it, but, but he's moved on uh, to, to do, you know, his own inventions. Um, and so what I've ended up with in the present is a team that grew over the years, the people who were the survivors of, you might call it the calling process. Um, and we have, I think, ended up with an amazing team. So it took a long time to build, to attract the right talent, to get people who had the, the ability to, to work in this weird disconnected way that we have these days of never seeing each other face to face and literally there's people that I don't speak to by voice all week and then mostly text and email. This is crazy, right? So, uh, but yet that's, that's kind of how it is. 
so being able to work with that and not to get all, uh, you know, wobbly being at home or whatever, it, 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 it took me a while to get those people, um, just the right kind of centered people to work in the organization. And, you know, we're not a big group. We're not, you know, there's, I don't know, 25 of us total. It's not that we're a big company. So we have to make every shot, you know, Davy Crockett, you know, make every shot tell, you know, you've only got so many, uh, so many bullets. And so that's what we do with our people is that they are fantastic. Um, and if there's one lesson I've learned is focus on the people and, and weed out the people who are either um, lackadaisical or just outright uh, don't have your best interests at heart. Takes a while, but you have to do that. Um, it's it's probably the hardest part of the business is is that people side. Why? Well, thank you so much for your transparency. You said something that hit hard that I believe a lot of entrepreneurs really needed to hear was, and I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing it, but you said failure is internal. Like you, your failure doesn't come from outside of you. Your failure comes from inside of you. You know, you have to make that decision. That is, thank you so much for saying that. Because cause I was listening to you, you said, like, you've been in business since the 80s, and I've only known one other company, <laughs> personally, that has been in business since the 80s. And I work with them pretty much on a daily basis. They're, in a, it's an, they're an amazing, they, they're a husband and wife couple. They've been in business longer than I've been alive. But to watch their flow of things, you can tell they never gave up. They always kept pushing, and they have a a wonderful sense of love for people. And that's another mm. thing that you said, you know, your, your business isn't a business, it's people. And I think as entrepreneurs, we miss that, and that's why we – we don't last as long as we thought we would have or, you know, we build our team to be workhorses but not actually take the time to actually sit back and realize, okay, these are people. Yeah. So I want to thank well, you so much for yeah. your transparency on that. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, but you, I, I was going to chime in that, that the, they, you have to treat them as more than, than employees because you will get so much more out of them. It's actually a self-serving thing. It's not even a it's not even a generous thing. You get more for your more bang for your buck, shall we say, if you treat people right. So it'd be really stupid to, you know, be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> so what has been in in all of the years that you have been in business, what has been your your in this your most favorite part of everything that you've ever done? Um, well, okay. So what I, what I enjoyed the most was the period after the year 2000. We had a crazy time in the 90s when everybody was rushing around starting things, and most many things were good, and, but a lot of them were bullshit. And, and that kind of got cleaned out in the year 2000. We all remember 14 March, 20, uh, 14 March 2000 when the entire tech crash happened. Um, but for me, the really good stuff happened afterwards because we got to work on real projects to really build companies, you know, um, to, to make things uh, in, that endured. And, uh, you know, we now know that, that most of the really exciting stuff that's happened in tech has happened in the 20 years since the year 2000. So everything in the 90s was just prelude. Um, and so that, for me, was a wonderful time where I uh, practiced this concept of mine, which I call mistake-based marketing, which is <laughs> go out and make mistakes and then learn from them quickly kind of thing. Um, and it's kind of a survey says, but you, we have the ability these days with online to try out concepts live as a survey um, and see if it, Flies right, so um, that's that's a it's a lot of fun to be able to do that. So now that was a great time because I got to play with so many businesses. The the what really tested me, of course, was this long gig with Origin Clear because it was such a tough nut to crack. That in the end, and I'm I'm 
I started to feel this year, my, I, my wife watched me be grit my teeth for the longest time. And then she finally saw me start to relax that, you know what, it's, we're, we're actually breaking through. And, uh, yeah. and she said, man, I, I, I was stressed right, right there with you. And I didn't realize it, but <laughs> I had been very stressed and it, it you know, it, it, praise her. But, but, um, you know, you know that uh, there's nothing better than the outcome of a really, really tough experience to go, okay, you know, this is coming through. And, it, and you, you, you feel like finally that thing is moving that took so long. Well, um, I, you know, I think the best things do not come easy. I do agree with you on that one. The best things do not come easy. And, and because of that, you enjoy them so much more when they do get there. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> so, Mr. Riggs, can you please, you, you told us that we can join you on your, it's, you said Thursday at 5 p.m., your CEO call, which I have just registered for. Super awesome. Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific and 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, how else can our audience reach out to you to uh join you in becoming an entrepreneur or to follow you and just just find out more about how to be the superior CEO that you are. Well, okay, so that is a wonderful concept. And what, what, what I would suggest is um, to go to the Origin Clear doc, uh, the Facebook Origin Clear site, the, the page, and like mm-hmm. that page, uh, it's about 20,000 plus people, um, like that because you know I post myself on that a lot, but in addition to on the originclear.com site to subscribe to our newsletter, um, because you know I regularly send out um, my CEO update every week, and when people re- reply to it, it's not one of those no reply addresses. It goes to my inbox, and so mm-hmm. I love to hear from people. Um, yes, I'm suicidal. I sent it out to 24,000 people, <laughs> but, uh, nonetheless, um, I do, I do, I do try to respond and I like hearing from, from people. So that's probably the simplest way is to, is to sign up for the origin clear newsletter and just stay in close touch. Um, and, as a, and you're absolutely right. You, you know, join a briefing, um, and you'll get to hear about all kinds of things on the briefing. Uh, again, originclear.com and just click on CEO, as you just did. Um, I look forward to seeing you on the show. And um, we have a lot of fun. You know, we keep it loose. Um, as a public company, we tell people more than what public companies normally do. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's a good thing. I think transparency is an important thing. So um, I'd love to have your, your listeners on. And, you know, um, this. You know, my my feeling about this year is that it's it's a really tough year, but but opportunity is born out of distressed times. It really is. Mm-hmm. So I I have heard, and I think it's true, that the big fortunes were created not in good times, but in depressions and recessions. That's when people sort of grabbed the reins of some of some kind of business opportunity and made it happen. Um, and I think that's bearing out to be true. There are people who are doing very well this year. There are people who are just surviving, and there's people who are having a very, very hard time. And I think that it it is in everybody's hands to do something about it. Uh, and I want to make less of the challenges because I sometimes wonder how, for example, if somebody was a you know a top waiter or waitress at a at a fine steakhouse and was making as much as $500 a night and now months later has been making nothing. I have worked in food service myself and I know that if the, you know, you don't, these people typically don't have a lot of reserves. It, it's, it's mind boggling. I, I think that we've learned a lot about how not to respond to a virus, but that's that discussion is for another time. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, it's- 2020 has definitely been a year of challenges, triumphs, innovation, and finding out who we really are 
and what it is that we really want to do. Because while there are a lot of businesses that have gone out of business in 2020, there are a lot of there's just as many people starting new businesses as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know what business it is that you are looking to start, go to poorpreserver.com and take a look at it. See if it's for you. And here in Texas, summer, we're always looking for a pool to jump in because we never know what the weather's going to be outside. So <laughs> we don't really have a winter. <laughs> so if you're in Texas, I would definitely look into it. But Mr. Riggs, what what are the final words that you would, you've said? You've left so many golden nuggets for our audience today. You've shared so much with us. What what would your final words be for our audience members here on the Secret to Success? Well, thank you. Um, I, I I think my final words are that uh, number one, uh, you know, I I'm not I'm not young, uh, and but you can always be young in behavior. Um, Remember that the, the real, the, the, real, the thing that happens when people get old is they start moving slow. So remember to just keep your speed going in life and in work and everything. Just keep going. Keep, stay on the move. And that's the best, um, I think it's the best prescription for um, success is to, is to stay on the move and get things done fast. Um, turn things around quickly, you'll find very quickly that you'll start lapping other people and that will start to pay off. So, and number two is it will, success will not happen immediately, but just keep adapting and okay, this worked, this didn't work, this worked, this didn't work. And just, you know, broken field running that works very well in business and in life. So um, just learn from the lessons, keep going. And, um, you know, I beg your listeners to not to get discouraged. It's uh, I've been there. I've been through the hard times, um, and this these are hard times. So let's get through it. Uh, remember who you love, and uh, don't forget to take care of that. Awesome! Thank you so much, Mr. Riggs, ladies and gentlemen. You will have all of the contact information that Mr. Riggs has has given you in the show notes, so you can be able to reach out. Join the CEO call on Thursdays, as well as join the newsletter. Thank you so much for listening to us today for the Secrets of Success podcast. And from the words of our CEO here at the APS Business University, you can plant better, you can dominate. Thank you all so much for joining us today. Have an amazing day. Be the candidate investment firms are looking to hire. Become a CFA charter holder. Stand out for having the skills to thrive in the competitive investment industry. Visit cfainstitute.org slash learn to find out more about the Level 1 CFA exam. At T-Mobile for Business, unconventional thinking means we see things differently so you can focus on what matters most. That's why we've become the leader in 5G, number one in customer satisfaction, and a partner who includes 5G in every plan. So you get it all. Unconventional thinking is better for business. Open Signal awards T-Mobile as America's fastest 5G network USA. 5G user experience report July 2021. Capable device required. Coverage not available in some areas. Some users may require certain plan or features. See T-Mobile.com. For J.D. Power 2020 award information, visit jdpower.com slash awards.